Extraction of metals Extraction of metals actually comes from the reactivity series because the okay. addition of an element on the reactivity series actually determines the method that can be used to extract that very metal from its uh, uh, mixture. So, yes, sir. from the list that we have, the only ones we are going to talk about is aluminium, zinc, iron, and copper. These are the only ones that we are going to actually talk about. And then aluminium, right. aluminium the method that we use to extract it from uh, its uh, metal in, uh, mixture is electrolysis. These two, iron and zinc, so reduction by carbon, then copper, and stemor decomposition. So these, okay. three, these three actually, you have to write. Or maybe that you, you have to write this uh, that I'm highlighting. Or maybe uh, we learn then send the video from which you can copy the notes. I don't know. Yes, I think that's better. So I can focus right now. Okay. So um yes. so those are the things that you have to focus on. And then the other thing is uh, the other thing is that um the other elements will not talk about them. So that's why I'm saying the position of an element determines the method from which uh, its, uh, its mixture can be separated. Yes, sir. So there are these three methods, electrolysis, reduction by carbon, and thermal decomposition. So electrolysis is for more reactive elements, these ones here. Reduction by carbon, these ones here and then the thermal decomposition, these ones there. So today I want us to look at iron. Though what is in the in the in the mid term has just gone up to zinc. But you cannot learn zinc minus first learning iron. But right. because iron is a little bit longer, we can still start with zinc. We can still start with zinc and it's actually uh, it's actually easier. So this this pamphlet, there's nothing to do with zinc, but I'm going to have some write-ups that I'm going to share with you today. So first thing, right. first, thing first, you need to understand that uh, zinc, zinc is extracted, zinc is extracted extracted from its uh, or using reduction reduction by carbon reduction by carbon is a method that we use to extract zinc from its uh, mixture Yes, sir. And the name of the metal ore. So these metal ores they have got common names. They also have uh, they also have uh, scientific names from which you should be able to write their uh, chemical form. It. So um, aluminium, the metal ore is uh, zinc. Sorry, zinc oxide. The metal ore is called zinc blende, which you should be able to remember. Zinc blende. So zinc blende, from the zinc blende, it's difficult for you to know the chemical formula or the elements that are present in zinc blende. So the scientific name, scientific name, is actually called zinc sulfide. 
the scientific name is called zinc sulfide. Now, when we say sulfide, it's different from sulfate. Sulfide okay. is different from sulfate. So the chemical, the chemical formula for zinc, this chemical formula for zinc blend eh, is actually um, the chemical formula for zinc blend. Let me. Oh, oh. The chemical formula for zinc blend is actually ZNS. So zinc, right. zinc blend is actually zinc sulfide, whose chemical formula is ZNS. All right, so. so so far, what have you picked? Um, I've picked I've picked up that um sulfide and sulfide and sulfate are different and then the chemical formula for zinc sulfide is zns if it was wait so can i ask a question is zinc sulf sulfate a thing it's the what zinc sulfate is there such a thing as zinc sulfate yes zinc sulfate is there as a compound but not the one we actually talking about today <clears throat> Yes, so um, as to what I've learned is that uh, the scientific name for the metal or zinc blender, the scientific name is zinc sulfide, and uh, the chemical formula for for sulfide for zinc sulfide is ZNS. Whereas, like for me to remember, zinc sulfate, it wouldn't be ZNS; it would be Z ZNSO, and then I think a four with it. Yes. Yes. So yes, um, now, which method do we use for extraction? The method is already there. But yes. now, um, actually, the, the name reduction is referred to as the removal, the removal of oxygen atom from the compound. So uh, the reduction that is being referred to in this very uh, method of extraction as reduction by carbon is actually the removal of oxygen from the compound. But now, when, uh, you, when you look at this zinc blend, the zinc sulfide, it does not have oxygen. It doesn't. So meaning, yes, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that this zinc has the oxygen. Not only that, is to make sure that this sulfur moves out. So the first method, the first thing that we actually have to do is to roast zinc. So step number one, Step number one is that zinc is, is roasted in air. Zinc is roasted in air to form zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. So that's the first step that happens is to roast the zinc blender. So zinc blender is roasted in the air, meaning zinc blender is heated in the presence of air. That's the roasting we're talking about. Right. And when that happens, the zinc blender is converted to zinc oxide and then sulfur dioxide is also formed. So... Yes, sir. Happening ZNS, the zinc blender, roasted in air, in air, roasted. What is formed is zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide. But now there is actually an environmental concern. 
the environmental concern is that this sulfur dioxide is a poisonous gas, is an acidic gas which should not be allowed to escape into the atmosphere. Okay. Because, because when you're looking at acid bases and salts, you actually talked about uh, you actually talked about um, acidic uh, acidic uh, oxides, and these acidic oxides actually have the, the acidic oxides actually have the capacity to acidic oxides have got the capacity to form acidic rains. So when this sulfur dioxide is allowed to go into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. During cloud formation, acidic rains is likely to be formed, and we understand that acidic rains have got an impact, one, on the vegetation, two, on the lime, on the on the on the monument. Yes, sir. So, uh, the precaution is that the precaution is that this zinc precaution environmental. Uh, indicator is that we cow shown is that sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide should not be allowed to to escape into mm -hmm. atmosphere why because it can it leads it leads to the formation of acidic rains acidic rains which can destroy the vegetation so that's a concern meaning this reaction should actually happen in an environment <laughs> where this sulfur dioxide is not allowed to escape. Meaning this reaction to, should not happen, should not happen in an open space. It should happen actually under a controlled temperature, under a controlled amount mm -hmm. of oxygen. So that the sulfur dioxide that is produced is not allowed to escape. All right. Now, once this happens, the sulfur dioxide is actually produced, therefore, this sulfur dioxide now, we are going to get it. We get our sulfur dioxide, and then we put it in the chamber where the reduction by carbon actually mm. happens. Where the reduction by carbon happens. So step number two, step two is that, is that, uh, the zinc oxide now is zinc oxide is loaded is loaded in the blast in the blast furnace together together with coke which is carbon and the limestone And limestone. So once this happens, once this happens, is is uh, actually once this happens, there are quite a number of reactions that happens, and these reactions are highly discussed under uh, uh, extraction of iron. Like I said, that that's the first basis that we have to look at. But because we have already started looking at limes, that uh, started looking at zinc. I will add, I will have no choice than to actually take you through the steps that happens. So these three things that we are loading, we have the coke, we have the limestone. The function of this coke actually is what produce this coke they are talking about as coke. It's the same one here, it's the same carbon here. Yes, sir. Same carbon. So what actually happened is that this coke reacts with oxygen and what is formed is the uh, carbon dioxide. Again, this very carbon dioxide reacts with coke again to produce carbon monoxide. 
And carbon monoxide is actually the gas that is responsible to facilitate the reduction process. So this, this is the guy responsible for the reduction process to happen. So because this guy is the one who facilitates the reduction, we are actually going to call him. What do you call the, the chemical species that brings about reduction? If you remember under redox, what is it called? If you have actually not forgotten. It's called By the, the reducing agent. The agent that helps in the process of reduction to be completed is called reducing agent. So in this uh, in this um, actually process, carbon monoxide is our reducing agent. So the reason as to why we have this coke is to make sure that carbon monoxide is produced. And once carbon monoxide is produced, is the one that does the reducing. That's why we call it a reducing agent. So now once we have this reducing agent produced, it is the one now that actually reacts with zinc oxide and this oxygen is removed. It's at this point I said the removal of oxygen is what we are calling a reduction. Yes, sir. So this process is actually completed as a reduction process when the reducing agent, which is carbon monoxide, is produced, which in turn reacts with zinc oxide and then a pure zinc metal is formed. That process is what we are actually called, calling reduction. Yes. Okay, so uh, the next thing now, the next thing is um, we now need to look at what happened what actually happens when carbon monoxide reacts with zinc is our next item on the docket. So uh, now the reduction, reduction of zinc oxide which is ZNO to zinc metal. What actually happens? So what happens is that, which I can call step uh, three, according to those steps we've been taking, zinc oxide reacts with, the reducing agent reacts with the Reducing agent, which we know. What's our reducing agent? Um, oxy oxygen. Reducing agent. No, I just wrote it up not too long ago. Oh, um, carbon carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. Um. Carbon monoxide. Um, uh, yes, sir. Carbon monoxide. Yeah. Okay. That's very true. That's very true. So, uh, which is carbon monoxide to form zinc metal, zinc metal and carbon 
carbon dioxide. So this is what happened. So we are saying we're gonna have now zinc, zinc oxide actually we are reacting with carbon monoxide and what is actually formed is zinc metal and then carbon dioxide now this gas here this gas here also is very important because if you remember the previous reactions that we've had this carbon mono this carbon dioxide was actually reacting with carbon. Yes, this carbon dioxide was actually reacting with carbon to produce the carbon monoxide. So, because this gas is very important, it is also not allowed to escape. Not allowed to escape. Why? Why shouldn't we allow it to escape? One, because it reacts with carbon to produce a reducing agent, meaning without this reducing agent, the zinc will not be extracted. This process actually will not happen. This process is only happening because this reaction is only possible because carbon monoxide is produced and carbon monoxide is produced from the reaction of carbon dioxide and carbon. That's one. Two, each time when carbon dioxide is being produced, meaning there is a serious reaction happening. And this carbon dioxide actually holds a lot of heat. So if this heat containing carbon dioxide is allowed to escape, this reaction will actually happen in a very cold environment. But this reaction should happen in a very hot environment. So carbon dioxide should not be allowed to escape because it carries heat. And once that heat is allowed to leave the chamber, then the process becomes small, slow rather. Not only that, because this zinc actually is obtained in a molten state. So meaning it has to melt. Melting of zinc can only happen at a very, very high temperature. So all these things are pointing to the fact that this gas should not be allowed to escape. Now, because we have actually produced our zinc, we have actually produced our zinc, the extraction process is actually completed. Now, because in here it is very hot, we are saying that limestone is also present, but that limestone is just calcium carbonate. That limestone is just calcium carbonate. Now, because of high temperature in there, this calcium carbonate decomposes into calcium oxide as well as carbon dioxide and again at this point we are saying carbon dioxide should not be allowed to escape due to the same reasons that we have and now uh because this zinc we are actually extracting is coming from the soil where the major impurities is sand Sand is called silicon. So that sand actually should be removed. Remember when you are done cooking in shima, you do not throw away your pot, but you just clean it. So the cleaning of this pot, because after the process, it leaves the dirt inside of the chamber acidic, we actually need the calcium oxide to remove the impurities. So the last stage is that this calcium oxide now reacts with silicon dioxide, which are the major impurities inside of the chamber where all this is happening. And once this is done, calcium 
silicate is produced. And then this is removed as the dirty. So once this reaction actually happens, this is acidic. Silicon dioxide is acidic, is acidic, and calcium oxide is a base. So actually, there is a neutralization reaction that actually happens. By so doing, this slug is removed as a neutral, neutral compound in readiness to use this chamber for the extraction. Who is there? Yeah. Huh? Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. So, any Hello. questions? Mom was calling me. You can attend to her? Oh, no, it's all right. Uh, I told her that I'm in class. I'll attend after, sir. Okay. So, ask me questions. Um, I've, I've understood on this, on the steps, but I just need to read over them, like, to understand properly. But if you don't get, there's a point of me going back and explain one or two things. Um, no, not really. I don't think you need to. Okay, so this is what actually happens. Now, in an exam, they like bringing very funny questions where they combine them. So these questions I'm actually going to send you uh, I hope this video can also be sent to Bernard so that you two guys can have time to, to look at how these questions actually come. So I'll run it through again. The, the yeah. metal O for zinc, if you can remind me, is zinc blender. Zinc blender. The chemical name is zinc. Zinc sulfide. Sulfide. And the chemical the chemical symbol is ZNS. ZNS. So this ZNS is actually first roasted. So first you do the roasting. In the air. The roasting in the air so that zinc oxide is formed. After that, you now react. You now do the reduction, the reduction, where um, zinc oxide reacts with the reducing agent, which is the carbon monoxide. And then once the reaction is done, we do the cleaning. And the cleaning part is the one that I have just indicated here. Or maybe the other point that I have to mention is that the chamber in which all this thing is done. Remember, when you are trying to prepare and shimmer, you don't just pick anything and start cooking. You look for a pot that has got uh, properties that can enable your cooking. So the chamber yes. in which all this is done, I had already mentioned, is called the blast furnace. Yes, sir. And this blast furnace actually is a very huge chamber which has walls made up of very thick material with a high melting point and high densities to make sure that when all this is happening, the walls of the chamber does not melt. The walls of the chamber is able to sustain high temperature where all this is actually happening. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me send work right now so that you, let me send the video, you replay it, and then you actually do the work. All right. <laughs> 